name's Thomas Hughes, and I'm the Executive Director of Article 19, the Global Human Rights Organization. Four years ago, Article 19 designed a new global strategy that looks at all the components that comprise freedom of expression and information. It includes digital rights, it includes the protection of bloggers and journalists, it includes transparency and access to information, it includes civic space, and it includes media, media freedoms. Two years ago, we decided we needed to measure this. We needed a metric that would tell us where expression and information rights were in every country around the world, so we could track and see which countries were acting on their freedom of expression and information commitments and which were failing. One of the unique things about the Expression Agenda metric is that it's the first of its kind analysis that looks at 172 countries around the world on five aspects of freedom of expression as defined by Article 19. It's based on a data set compiled using over 2,500 independent academic experts from the Varieties of Democracies Institute in Sweden, um, which makes it the first comprehensive attempt to address and measure freedom of expression around the world. And we really hope that with the report uh, and with this um, indication of the trends, it will create another push for the civil society and for the, all of those who are advocating for improvement of the freedom of expression to be vigilant and to continue the fight for freedom of speech in Brazil but also internationally. Well, the report looks at five market areas and these are digital freedom, protection, civic space, transparency and media freedom and indeed the worst trend has been in the area of media freedom and the report also shows that media freedom around the world severely declined in between 2014 and 2017. What is happening and what do we, do we mean by saying that media freedom declined? Here we look at uh, several threats that the journalists, communicators and human rights defenders are facing. On the most serious, such as murders and threats of murder that has been on increase, but also various legal threats. And here we mean various legal actions brought against the journalists either through civil, uh, civil legislation such as defamation or the others, but also criminal convictions under very restrictive media-related legislation. In, in the past uh, three years we have seen a deterioration of uh, freedom of expression globally and this is matching with you know, our, an uprise in terms of a strong man in politics that is characterized uh, in leaders such as Erdogan in Turkey, Vladimir Putin in Russia, and Viktor Orban in Hungary. I think you know it's important for civil society um, to be aware of the risk uh, that these authoritarian uh, policies um, you know, represent, uh, both in terms to them as civil society organizations, but more importantly, uh, the chilling effect that this is going to have in um, the, the broader general public and in particular um, uh, vulnerable uh, communities and uh, minorities that are the forefront uh, of the receiving end of this repression. Um, unfortunately, uh, this uh, trend of strongman politics uh, will continue as we have seen with the election of Bolsonaro as uh, President of the Republic in, in Brazil. Uh, so we will see these tendencies of uh, uh, reduction of freedom of expression on the one hand, I think that the gap is growing bigger between those who have the power and those who don't. But at the same time, I also think that uh, more and more people and communities use uh, uh, specifically digital tools in order to raise their, their voices, uh, but also to engage more with uh, wider civil society uh, to be able to get back some of those spaces that are being taken over by the politicians. So, on the one hand, yes, it seems that the challenge, is, the challenge is very big, but I also think that it's very important to recognize civil society initiatives uh, to protect and defend those uh, spaces. Mm -hmm. So if we take Southeast Asia as an example, um, it's, it's extremely diverse. We have so many cultural group, groups, uh, language communities, ethnic identities, uh, indigenous rights as well. Um, and to be able to participate fully in the political process, uh, to be able to get what you know you deserve as a citizen, uh, uh, whether in your own country or also in the region and globally, um, it's really necessary to be able to have your voices heard and, and to be able to participate meaningfully. So 
without that access uh, to the media or also to be able to communicate with, um, with your elected representatives, for example, um, I think that's a serious hindrance in terms of uh, an individual's right to uh, express themselves. And again, because it's a very diverse community, um, clearly we have different perspectives, we have different interests, uh, and all of these must be represented uh, either through the, the, the mainstream media or even alternative media spaces as well.